Welcome back to Comic Book Savant. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite uh, animated shows that is, well, it just finished up its run on TV after four seasons, and that is Star Wars Rebels. It was on the Disney XD network for the past four seasons, and I wanted to talk about this show this episode because I feel like it's a very... Um, not too many people know about this show. Now, back on the Disney Channel years ago, we had um, Star Wars, the Clone Wars series that ran for about, um, I want to say five full seasons, and then we got part of a sixth season due to uh, Disney acquiring uh, Lucasfilm from George Lucas so that the sixth season kind of abruptly, six or seventh season, I can't remember, abruptly kind of got stopped midway in production and they later released the unfinished episodes or partially finished episodes that didn't air separately um, on on Netflix and in DVDs, DVD releases that came out. And this is the same creative team behind that series. So if you've ever watched Star Wars, The Clone Wars, uh, Dave Filoni, which was the, the the main showrunner and creative head for that show, is the same creative head for Star Wars Rebels. So it's the same core nucleus of creators behind the scenes and animators uh, doing Star Wars Rebels. But we have um, where Star Wars Rebels, excuse me, Star Wars Clone Wars, actually focused on characters we knew far as Anakin, Obi-Wan, Yoda, Mace Windu, those characters. In Star Wars Rebels, we have a whole new cast of characters, a small group of rebel rebels that lead to what we know as the Galactic Rebellion and Episode 4, 5, and so on. Uh, so it's a really good show, and they tie into a lot of the canon. So this is a show that, like, if you're a Star Wars fan and you only watch the movies, or maybe you only watch the movies and read the books, that you might be missing out a lot. This was a very important series because it was, it was designated that this show and Star Wars... Uh, the Clone Wars are actually canon in the Star Wars universe, so these shows do tie into the bigger, the bigger world. Um, again, it ran four seasons. You can pick it up on DVD and digital through like iTunes, um, Amazon outlets like that if you want it digital, or you can actually get the DVDs or Blu-rays. It is a fantastic, a fantastic series. We have a cast of Vanessa Marshall. She um, voices Hera Syndulla, which is the the main one of the main characters. We have Freddie Prince Jr. He um, plays the Jedi Kanan Juris. We have Steve Bloom as a uh, Zeb. We have Taylor Gray as Ezra Bridger, which is he. He's basically our main character, aka like kind of our, like our Luke Skywalker. And we have uh, Tyus uh, Sakar, and she plays Sabine Wren. Uh, so this is like just a small, a small group uh, again of characters that that are rebels that are fighting on this one planet, and it expands out to the bigger universe. You see them connect to Mon Mothma and other characters. You see. Um, main characters like a younger Princess Leia crossover. We see Lando Carissian. So you see mainstays in the larger Star Wars universe crossover. Um, we also see characters that cross over from the Star Wars Clone Wars series. We have um, some of the clones that were under Obi-Wan and Anakin. They make an appearance later on in the, in the show. Um, and it's just really really well done but again Dave Filoni at this point after all the multiple seasons of the of the Clone Wars has shown he really has a beat and understanding for the Star Wars universe at large and he really tackles some some really uh, heavy subjects and even expand the myth of the lore out some within this series um, the first season is probably the hardest season to get through because you're adjusting. The animation style is slightly different. Um, this was on Disney XD, so they were trying to find, uh, I think, their way that first season on uh, if how kid-friendly it was going to be, how dark they might go. As the seasons progress and the characters grow, the stories get a little bit darker, which they should. And it's, just, it's a similar thing that they encountered being on Disney initially with the Star Wars um 
Clone Wars series. Um, but this is definitely more concise and tighter because we knew we, this was after Clone Wars, but before Episode 4 and some of these events leading into Rogue One. You hear a few Easter eggs as you watch the show. Um, you see they have a droid called Chopper, which is their R2-D2 slash BB-8 type character. You see him in the background in Rogue One. Um, in the end fight scene for Rogue One, you see their ship, which is the Ghost. You see it flying in the final fight in Rogue One. So it's little Easter eggs. And you hear um, Hera's name called over the intercom system in one of the middle scenes in Rogue One where, in the, where they're at the Rebel base. And um, um, Jen, when they're first meeting with Jen before they set out on the mission, you hear her being paged over the intercom. So it's little tie ins. If they're not major tie-ins as far as these characters into the movies per se at this point. Maybe down the road we'll get more tie-in. But far as the larger world tying into the show and running through the show, that's where you get a lot of the canon um, bits and seeing these characters and get some of their histories fleshed out. Seeing Leia very young before the events and see how very active she was in the rebellion, helping her father. Um, you see your father pop up um, in a few episodes as well, and they direct, you know, they directly kind of tie in a report to him because him and Mom Mothma, that council that you know you saw in the prequels, are kind of starting to build up the rebellion. And you know, this is like one cell, they're more in the cells. This is before the events of Rogue One, where they make their first attack against the actual, you know, empire and kind of solidify as the galactic uh, rebellion. So this is like they're kind of like sleeper cells all around the galaxy, kind of doing their part in their little areas and then coming together. But it's so uniquely done. It's like the storytelling is phenomenal. The animation is great. And it's only four seasons, so you can binge this over a short amount of time. Um, I will put down below in the description below or you'll see a note pop up somewhere at this point in the video or I'll let you know if the seasons are available on Netflix or not to to watch without you having to purchase them. Um, you might, depending on your cable provider, since season four literally just ended uh, not even a month ago, you still might be able to go back and watch the previous seasons like through your on-demand, through your cable service. Again, it's only four seasons. I think they run about, um, I want to say... The first season was a shorter season. I think it might have been only 10 episodes, but the previous, the, the following seasons were about 16 episodes or so um, a season. So it's definitely something you can binge over a couple of weekends or one weekend if you're that dedicated enough. I think if you're a Star Wars fan, that you, especially if you enjoy the movies, you're missing a piece by not checking out this show and it's so well done. So it's worth your time if you have a moment to check it out. Um, I can't highly recommend it enough. Star, you know, if you're a Star Wars fan, if you're not a Star Wars fan and you're not into the whole world of Star Wars, it's not, you know, I can't recommend it to you. But if you happen to be, it's definitely worth the time to check out if you haven't seen it already. So that's all I have for you guys for this video. If you're new and you're just finding me, don't forget to subscribe. If you've already subscribed, don't um, forget to click the bell notification down at the bottom and like and share the content out. And I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Comic Book Savant. You have a good day and I'll see you soon.